Grant Dade is the is only the third chief meteorologist in the 60 year history of KFES TV. Before KFES, he worked for KLTV in Texas, where he won best weather cast from the Texas Associated Press of Broadcasters in 2010 and 2012. Grant Dade has been with KFES 12 since 2014. Been that long already, Grant? It, it has been that long. Matter of fact, this is the the longest place I've ever lived anywhere in my life. Is it really? Cape Girardeau. Is yeah. it? But you're from Texas originally? No, I'm not from okay. Texas. My okay. dad was in the Air Force, so I moved all around as a kid. Okay. Uh, it's kind of what got me interested in weather. A uh, lot of different climate zones I lived in growing up as a young kid and experienced different types of weather that kind of piqued my curiosity. Sure. Well, that was going to be one of my questions yeah. is what, you know, what did it for you? What made you want to get into this field? Well, I used to be... Uh, I can tell you, we, I lived in Rapid City, South Dakota, and I, I use this kind of example of something that kind of just sparked my interest. Uh, Softball-sized hailstorm uh, hit our house, and I remember watching the little hailstones uh, destroy windshields and cars and the <laughs> side mirrors getting busted off, and, and it just sounded like hundreds of people were just jumping on our roof. Yeah. It's just extremely loud. I'm like, what is causing that? And my dad was home for lunch and he said a lot of choice words that I won't say here. Uh, he was very upset, needless to say, because he saw everything being destroyed. Right. Like, what is causing this? I was like five years old at the time. Okay. And I can remember uh, Rapid City got just an incredible amount of variations of weather, kind of like we do here, but even more so. Okay. Uh, we had a blizzard one year that shut the base down for nearly two weeks. And I can remember looking at the house across the street that was a two-story house, and the snow went up to the roof. Uh, and the snow drift went up, to, and you're like, wow, this is amazing. That kind of just piqued my curiosity from a young age, so I started to learn as much as I could from, from a young age. So I have a daughter who is very afraid of the weather whenever right. it gets bad you embraced it you it, it, it interested you well that's an interesting question that's an interesting thought because when I was young I was terrified of storms okay but I was still wanting to learn about them right it was I can remember the flip switching when I was about 10 years old uh, when I was nine terrified of thunderstorms now I liked them and I if my parents were around it was it was cool I yeah. was interested but I would not want to be alone during a thunderstorm sure Ten, 10 years old, it changed. Okay. And I couldn't think of anywhere else I'd rather be but in a thunderstorm. And in high school, I would take, uh, my mom used to get furious at me for this. I would, I would go get our ladder and I would climb up on the roof now, I don't recommend anybody doing this uh, as thunderstorms were rolling in. So I get a better view because we had a lot of trees around the house and I wanted to see the storm. So I'd get up on the roof and I'd watch the storm in the distance and light. And when it got close, of course, I got off the roof, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that's had to, get, had to get that view coming yeah. in. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be short on time here. So, okay. so on a daily basis, um, how do you go about letting us know what to expect? Well, I look at uh, a lot of different types of, uh, of forecasts that are generated from computer models. Okay. And we kind of get all that information together and you have to base it on which models performing the best. Uh, where's our weather coming from? What's it doing right now? And we kind of put, it's almost like a puzzle. We're putting all these pieces together and then we come up with uh, an answer basically of, of what to expect over the next 24 hours uh, to 72 hours. Once we get out about 72 or you get to three, four, five, six days, there's a lot of variation in there. But we're usually uh, within the next 30, 72 hours pretty good at uh, comp especially compared to where we used to be like 10 years ago uh, so it, technology is leaps and bounds okay better. okay um, weather is just I mean it's 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 always what people are talking about right um, and it's such a public service what you do you know I know it's a passion but uh, you know people as I said my daughter is scared of it you know but it, it impacts our lives on a daily basis Right, it does, and uh, we do surveys and find out that people are still, that's the one thing I really like about my job is the fact that uh, people can rely on us and uh, they want that information. So as long as people want it yeah. and there's a demand for folks like us, then uh, we'll be here. Uh, once that goes away, you know, I, don't, I can't speak for what's gonna happen 20 years down the road, but still right now, especially during severe weather events. Absolutely. I mean, you can't just look at an app and know what's happening. Uh, somebody like myself or Laura Wibbemeyer, or, you know, Brian Allworth, we can look at the storm, dissect it, and let you know who's gonna get hit by what. 
while it's happening. And that's something that you just can't get uh, from just looking at a phone. And you mentioned the app, KFES has a weather app. Right, and so we stream on that. So when there's severe weather, uh, you, when we have the warnings, you can watch it live on the app. You can also be alerted if you're in the warning area. So you get a lot of people that are like, let's say it's in Cape Girardeau and the sirens go off, but the tornado is mainly up in the Jackson area. And they weren't alerted on the app. Well, you're not officially in that warning polygon, so you're not gonna get alerted. It uses the, the uh, GIS to go along with the warning. So we're not just sending out all these warnings to everybody that don't need, that does not need them. So in your position, I know you're you're never off work. I mean, you're, 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 you're always, uh, in tune with what's happening. Um, but if you have time to sit back and relax, what do you like to do? My favorite thing to do is fly fish. I like Is it really? Fishing. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Southeast Missouri has a lot of great rivers that I did not know about when I moved here. Sure. I thought this was a flat, I thought the Delta was the, all the way up towards St. Louis. I had no idea we had the St. Francis Mountains, the, uh, the Ozarks this close, and all these stream fed, uh, spring fed streams that are out there, crystal clear water, full of smallmouth bass. For somebody that likes to fly fish, it, it's great. So you've, you've, you've found your oasis from that oh, standpoint. Yeah. We we'll get the kayaks out there, we we'll get the fly rods, and then we go have a good time. Now, do you do is it weekend trips? Do you take the day? Every do once you... in a while. Most of the time, it's a day trip because most of where we go is uh, within a day's drive, within an hour or two's drive. So it's not really that bad. We I frequent the Castor River Valley. Sure, often, yeah. And you'll hear me mentioning all these areas when heavy rain comes by because there's not a lot of uh, flood gauges on Castor and there's a lot of campgrounds. So in the summer, I'm trying to, if there's a lot of water draining in the Castor, I'm trying to say, hey, listen up, maybe be time <laughs> to move the campers to higher ground. So you know you know where those spots are. Absolutely. And you know that it's time to time to move on. Well, thank you for what you do. Uh, as, you. as I said, it's, it's, you know, I know it's a profession, but it's obviously a great service uh, keeping us safe. Well, so thanks. thank you so much and thanks for being here mm -hmm. today.